contender after they beat Jeffrey Brought to the International Court in the Hague. It's a crime against humanity. So I will attempt to do the seven minutes. Oh, we go back. There we go. I'm going to start with a story. I'm Roland, Chief Development Officer of the Canadian Red Cross. Before this, I was the Chief Development Officer of the Irish Red Cross. And a few years ago, I ran a legacy campaign. I wanted to recruit new legacy donors, code, using a direct marketing approach. So what we did is we put together a task for our existing legacy donors and our best prospects, and we wrote to them, and we said, you guys were recruited on the back of a marketing campaign a little bit like this. So we think you'd probably be best placed to tell us what kind of thing will appeal to future legacy prospects. And we sent them three ads, and we said, we're going to put these in the Irish Times in a few months' time, depending on what you want. And we asked them a bunch of other questions, and we you know, made a little trip to kind of find out about them as well. And I sent it out the door, and I was sent it out the door. What do you think I was worried about? Just like that, it's in general. Any thoughts? Exactly. Exactly. I tell you, the one I was worried about with that child there, I thought, that's going to get me in trouble. They were all factual, we were all backed up. I could tell you right down to the name of the child and where they were. That wasn't what caused the problem. What happened was in the storm. We had a journalist bring me up. I had a mini outbreak on Twitter and Facebook. I even had a 30 year volunteer protesting outside the door of the Irish Red Cross. That was this sort of thing, you know, very, very up. But what they were bothered about was not the specifics of the animal. It was that we'd admitted that we marked it to donors. That was the issue. Oh my God, we marked it to donors. And we told them that we marked it to donors. So what is the problem with that? What is our product as it were? I think of myself as a marketer. I'm happy to be a marketer. I believe that fundraising is a form of marketing, a caring kind of thing. So what is our product? I thought, we, our donors see images like this. I'll take it very, very close down there. You, you can translate for, for your own course. Our donors see images like this all the time. They have a feeling, an emotional response. They want to reach out. They want to help. That feeling is something very deep, very precious. It's something about shared values and connection with the human being. And we offer them a way to help. We literally let them fly a helicopter. Right there, that's some of my colleagues in a helicopter. They're flying to the foothills of the Himalayas in Dunche in Nepal, and they're bringing a field hospital. Our donors can't go there, but they can do it and get the people there who cannot do that. And to be told that that's somehow that feeling is somehow kind of wrapped up in a marketing campaign, that didn't get on to that. My friends in the UK have been under big pressure with this in the last few months. It probably didn't reach down to them this year. It all started with a lady called Alice Cook who committed suicide, allegedly for the person being harassed by cold calls and cold mailing. She said she wasn't. There was an inquest at her. Family came out very clearly and said she had long term mental health issues and alcohol issues, that it wasn't going to the child's marketing she received. But by that point, the narrative had been lost. It was out in the media and that was the dominant story. It actually got worse because the Daily Mail, who in the UK is not everybody's favorite paper, I can tell you, went undercover to a telemarketing agency and they followed what the guys did there. That actually was pretty bad. It was pretty actually aggressive in terms of what they were doing. There really was a case for answer. The problem was is that it kind of got swept up into this all of this story, and actually all fundraising became bad. All of us, and that's you included, by the way, we're all in this. We're guilty of this dodgy, terrible business of marketing. It kind of spread to all kinds of everything. And then it got worse. Five CEOs of British charities were hauled up in front of a parliamentary select committee. Now, I've had the dubious honor of actually appearing in front of a parliamentary select committee. You know, the icebreaker thing they say, you know, there, you know, you want to know how they see it. Were you ever in front of parliamentary selection? It's a good story to tell. I can tell you they're not pleasant experiences. And one thing you learn very, very quickly is that they are not about the truth. They are not about balanced findings and an intelligent conversation. They are really about political point scoring. I remember being asked the same question four times by four different people in a row. And I was like, hey, the last, that was answered the last few weeks. And you're not listening to me. And I realized that Penny Drop, ah, no, this is for the benefit of the planet. Nothing a politician loves more than being on a moral crusade on behalf of the downtrodden and the oppressed, which is ironic when speaking to the CEOs of five incredible charities doing incredible work. And then it got even worse. A whole bunch of CEOs, I think 16 or 17, wrote an open letter of apology to the Sunday Times. And they apologized for certain fundraising practices. The problem was it was taken as an apology for all of them. So, what do you do? 
because we have to do something. The answer isn't to stop. We can't pull back from what we do. These are my colleagues in Sierra Leone who are doing incredibly heroic stuff. And the, this, they ran last year a social media campaign because nobody, Ebola was struggling to catch the world's attention. And if I don't do it, who will? That was one of the These people are going on the intensive. What they were actually doing was incredible. Speaking of having to change every hour of their speech because of the danger. The guys at the bottom are the volunteers at the Sierra Leone Red Cross. They're doing dead body removal. The most toxic, most dangerous. If we don't do it, who will? The people we serve, they need us to. We can't just abandon our profession. We can't just abandon marketing. We can't just abandon that feeling, that connection our donors have with that child in that photo or whatever it is for your cause. So what do we got to do? The answer isn't to abandon us all together. It's actually to do our jobs better. We spend an awful lot of money on recruitment and development of donors, and we spend a fraction on retention. And that's the thing we have to change. We have to listen to our donors more. At the Canadian Red Cross, we've started this process. We're starting to develop bespoke support and journeys for all of our donor clients. They're well thought out. They feel quite organic to the donors. And there's a lot of opportunity for feedback in that process. And that's actually shaping our recruitment. What we found, we did a recent campaign, a recruitment monthly giver. Our results were five times better than the regular recruitment campaigns because we used the feedback we got from the donor students this process. So it's not about stopping being nasty, it's actually about doing it better. And the more feedback, the more we dialogue with our donors, the more we will stay in touch with that feeling, that sense of connection with humanity. And it makes sense. We all know this, these age intelligence figures. We've all seen this in practice. I can actually back these up at Canadian Red Cross where we did that. So we need to test our retention policies, our practices. We need to test our donor experience practices. We need to measure them. And we need to spend as much money on them as we do on recruitment. We need to put our donors first. That's how we fix it. Bring us back to the beginning. That invention name, the one that generated all those conversations. I was on the phone for days after that. And tell me, you know, I raised donors. In the end, nine confirmed expectancy, 215 pledges, 168 new donors followed up as a result of an over $100,000 in cash. That piece of marketing generated a lot of conversations and we saved a lot of lives. So we'll do it your way. Thank you very much.